I know you're in there. Did you wet the bed? You, tell me about your mother. Have you got penis envy? Well, have you? What's your earliest memory? Good evening. I'm investigating the subject of therapy. Following on from my last blog, Cemetery Bingo, somebody kindly left a comment that I really should go and get some therapy. Freud was famously the godfather of modern psychotherapy. He was obsessed with symbolism, penis envy and dreaming. As if we have time for that. This is outrageous! How is this going to help anyone self-actualise? I think we can do better than that. Oh, hello, is that Mildred? Hello, is that Mildred? Oh, oh yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello there. Oh, hi, Mildred. My name's Amber. We, we scheduled a therapy session. Oh yes. You... Oh yes, I've just come out the bath. Oh not not to worry. Do you need a few minutes or is No, that's the marvelous thing about Zoom. You can get up to any old stuff and nobody can see what you're really up to. What led you to make this appointment today? <sighs> Yes, the subject of therapy, it's uh, quite broad and it's quite wide, isn't it? Um, hence, I thought it was worthy of my investigation. You know, everyone is an individual. People have different needs. Some people are looking to work on uh, a specific issue. I, I believe what you're talking about is eating your frog, which um, obviously is very important to identify what is the biggest frog and to just eat it. Um. As Brian Tracy explains in his seminal book, Eat That Frog, if you were stuck in a swamp and all you had to do to survive is eat one frog per day, you would do that really quickly, wouldn't you? Therefore, his message is simple. First, locate your frog on your to-do list and then do that first. Then you can hang out in your swamp all day. But since you ask, I am experiencing a few problems with my flatmate. Okay, what, what kind of problems? I just feel that his behaviour is a little bit inappropriate. Can I ask in what way is it inappropriate? What kind of things does he do? Well, um, I'll tell him to go really, but he's very, he's very good with the seagulls. He's good with the seagulls. Have you seen the seagulls in Brighton? They're absolutely humongous. He has some good qualities, it sounds like. He helps you with the seagulls. He doesn't contribute towards the household in any way, and he's just a little bit of an attention seeker. Right, OK, so that must be difficult. Okay. Always with the one-upmanship, you know? Always the one-upmanship. I do um, a very serious uh, bit of vlogging on an important subject. I work very hard on it. Hmm. And um, as soon as I've put that out there, he just puts up something cute um, that takes no time at all and gets lots of likes. So let's recap on Brian Trace's important yet simple message. First, 
locate your frog on your to-do list, then do that first. You can buy an entire book with this one single bit of advice, which is available from all good greengrocers. Or better still, you can sign up to my 12-step Procrastinators Anonymous program and I will teach you in ways you can barely yet imagine how to successfully eat your frog. Oh, for God's sake, he's at it again! Look at you! Showing off for the camera! Little tart! Fluffy meat puppet totally undermining my work! Well, we could do better than that! Watch this! See? Two can play at that game! Alright! It sounds like there's some frustrations around the or when you do your vlogging and when he posts things. So we're talking about um, on social media. He's getting he's getting more attention. You feel is that correct? <laughs> He just puts up something just really unthought through and just playing to the audience and he just scoops up all the likes. You said earlier that some of his behaviour is inappropriate. Is, is that what you were referring to? He just sort of becomes sort of affectionate and cuddles up a little bit. And I think our relationship would improve immeasurably if he just stopped drinking my bath water. So he's drinking your bath water while you're in the bath? Yes, of course I'm in it when he's drinking it. Okay. Yeah, no, it does sound like it's quite very problematic. Thank you. I feel very heard. Anyway, let's move on. He's just a sodding cat. Sorry, he's a cat. I told you I wanted to investigate the subject of therapy. I have an issue with my flatmate who happens to be a cat and therefore I approached you. I, I wasn't, I, I didn't sort of um, take that on board that this flatmate was actually your cat. That sort of changes things somewhat. Having successfully investigated the subject of therapy, I can think of nothing in which to recommend it. If you want to lie about on catches all day, chatting to a complete stranger about your mother when you should have flown the nest long ago, then there may be something in it for you. But in my humble, yet perservacious opinion, there are better ways of spending your time, like eating your frog. Freud, the godfather of modern therapy, famously lambasted female women for not having penises, and yet it is no fallacy that he saw naughty symbolism in the unlikeliest of places, most noticeably dreams, and innocent arrangements of fruit. Thus agreeing with the Bible that girls started it all by being over-familiar with their apples, which is perhaps the first example of the phenomenon known as projection, which conveniently Sigmund also invented. Freud also had a big impact on surrealist art. Whereas previously, a still life of fruit had been a perfectly sufficient subject. It all started to get very silly. What makes this worse is that Freud also invented the pleasure principle where people follow idle pursuits instead of concentrating on self-actualization and start living rubbish lives and just doing what they damn well please, which is completely irresponsible of him and it would have been better if he'd just piped down. Freud also came up with the concept of the ego, the super ego and the id, which is just daft. I mean, who has the time for all these different personas? Do you have any anything else you want to ask me before we end? Hmm, yes. Um, 
Yes, could you please tell me, um, if you don't mind, uh, how do you manage to look so intelligent with leopard skin and glasses? I mean, such a lovely contrast, really, isn't it? I have no idea. I can't really answer that question. Well, as you can see from those investigations, I'm fine. Tell me about your dream last night. Last night I dreamt I was late and I had to run for the station. I had to run for the train. But when I got to the station, the train turned into chocolate. <laughs> 